All right. I think we're uh, almost ready to get started here. It is 11.57 a.m. East Coast time here in the U.S. And uh, you should just see an introductory slide. I guess you'd call it PowerPoint slide. There's PowerPoint slide show, it says. Uh, understanding futures margins. If you can hear me okay, give me a thumbs up. And uh, we're going to get started right on time here in a couple minutes. Evernob uh, asks uh, at NinjaTrader, which I guess would be me in this particular case, any chance in the future we could get into an intro to NinjaScript? Oh, we could write that down on my uh, notepad and ask the question. Um, and my answer is very possibly. Uh, thanks for the suggestion. As usual, suggestions greatly appreciated. And um, I will definitely uh, move that suggestion into the suggestion box and get the suggestion box into the right people's hands today. Uh, Chris, thank you for that confirmation. Thanks for being here. Adrian, thank you. Anisha, hello again. Uh, Nelson, welcome from Brazil. Glad to have you. Nelson Bellatato, love that name. Thanks for being here. So we're gonna start here right on time, 12 o'clock, and focus on uh, understanding futures margins. We'll talk about why they're unique and different, um, and some best practices and stuff like that. Gerson, hello from Miami, welcome. Louis, hello from Texas. I just drove through Texas, Louis. I drove from Charlotte, North Carolina to Tucson, Arizona with a college kid in the car and 936 miles of it was through texas <laughs> it was uh and actually the roads were great the people were great it was i don't want to uh, uh besmirge it one second it was a good experience um i was particularly impressed with how nice the roads were actually and not only that lewis it's big but not only that it's the first time in the united states I've seen a speed limit sign, posted speed limit, 80 miles an hour. Haven't seen it anywhere else, only in Texas. I guess you got to go that fast to get the, get through it. In any event, um, 12 o'clock, let's get rolling here. My name is Jim Cagnina. I'm with Ninja Trader. Um, appreciate everybody coming today. And we're going to focus on, uh, I have a PowerPoint. We're going to go through some of the basics on a PowerPoint. And then we're going to go shoot over to the charts and, and, and the trading platform, the Ninja Trader trading platform, and, and show some real time examples of uh, how leveraging is. We're going to cover both uh, overnight uh, margins, we're going to cover uh, day trade margins, and everything in between. So feel free to type in questions, uh, observations, comments, thoughts, hopes, loves, anything you want in the question box. I could see the Zoom question and answer box, I could see the YouTube question and answer box. I can't see the Facebook one, but the good news is my trusted sidekick, Isabella, uh, is, uh, can see it and she will cut, cut and paste those questions in so that I can see them as well. John from Iran, welcome. Joe from Ohio, welcome. Louis, hello from the Dominican Republic, sweet. Never been there, but it sounds like it's a pretty nice tropical paradise. <sighs> All right, um, before we even go any further, and this is kind of important, uh, piece of information. I mean, we're going to talk about day trade margins and leverage, and these two things are, are married together. They're inter and they're, they're related. Um, so it's very, it's going to be a, it's, it'll be, this risk disclosure is very important. You know, it's trading futures options on futures is not for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in future trading, you have this high combination of leverage and volatility. And although that could be an equation for opportunity, which probably why we're all here. It's also an equation for risk. And, uh, you know, I, my personal definition uh, of risk capital, again, I'm recommending you only fund a futures account with risk capital. Uh, money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle, lengthen my retirement horizon or overly stress me out. When I'm, in, when I, when I'm under stress, I make bad decisions. Bad things happen. Uh, in any event, um, so keep that in mind. Uh, I'm logged into a real-time 
simulated live trading account, with an IndyTrader software, real-time data. And like I said, we'll, we'll use the platform to tell the story a little bit, uh, the second part of the presentation. Um, I have a, pro a PowerPoint, it's not gonna be too painful, um, but again, feel free to type in questions as uh, we go forward here. And just to give you a little bit of a background, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, started my, I dipped my toes in the, in the waters in the early 80s. Um, so I've seen this whole, everything from pit trading, pit traded uh, phenomenon all the way through the electronic trading revolution uh, and all the way through um, what now we have, uh, uh, what's called the micro futures, which really is making futures trading accessible to just about anybody. Um, and Padilla, hi from Gardenia, California. I apologize if I said your name wrong. I probably did, but um, I'm not good at pronunciations. So any questions on risk or anything like that, type them in. Yeah, oops, I didn't want to do that. Jim, I don't want to do that. And we'll get started uh, accordingly. Wrong PowerPoint. Sorry, I should not have minimized that. Here we go. Okay. So it's, it's, there's a big distinction that we need to talk about uh, when you talk about the difference between futures margining and equity margining. You know, a lot, probably most of us are more familiar with trading equities or stock options or some of those, uh, or, you know, cash instruments or over-the-counter instruments. And there's a difference, there's a conceptual difference, a fundamental difference between the two. So let's start with stocks, bonds, ETF margins, uh, and I, I'm quoting the CME uh, website, um, so I'm not making this up. I'm quoting a, you know, the, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange website. Securities margin is the money you borrow as a partial down payment, up to 50% of the purchase price to buy and own a stock, bond, and ETF. The practice is often referred to as buying on margin. Or, you know, if you're selling short on margin, right, you're borrowing the shares to sell short against. And so this is, you know, when you borrow money, you pay, you pay interest, right? This is something, you, you know, and you're limited to uh, what you could do with uh, when you do that. Futures margins is the amount of money you must keep and uh, must deposit and keep with your broker in your brokerage account uh, when you open a futures position. It is not a down payment and you don't own anything. You do not own the underlying commodity. Nobody's gonna deliver a thousand barrels of crude oil to your backyard. Um, you're, you just have the ability now to trade, when, you know, day trade or a swing trade or position trade, uh, one of the many different asset classes that are very liquid and available to you uh, through the NinjaTrader trading platform. Um, so they're two different things, right? They're two different things. One of them, when you have a few, when we talk about futures margin, it's money that's already in your account. And if you think of it as a, from an accounting point of view, it's money you're allocating uh, or bookmarking to establish a position. And this will become more clear when we do some uh, examples. But you're not transferring money anywhere. You're not, it's not like you're wiring money anywhere or someone else is holding your money. It's, it's in your account. It's still in your futures account. Um, so there's a couple of different kinds of margins we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about overnight margins, aka also known as exchange minimum margins. And then later on, we're going to talk about day trade margins. And they're, they're, two, they're set differently, uh, and one has more flexibility than the other. So we're going to start with uh, uh, futures overnight margins. Um, and there's a couple of different kinds. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a type called initial margin, and there's a type called maintenance margin. And well, I'll get into the definitions of both and how they how they applied. A lot of us will never even worry about this because a lot of us are just going to day trade futures and we won't have a position overnight, but some might, some might. Um, and so trading hours here is, is important, right? Because overnight, the idea over, overnight suggests, well, when I'm sleeping, right? You know, in, in the equity world, you have regular trading hours, you have extended trading hours, and even extended trading hours in the equity world isn't 24-7. So um, it's, 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 it's completely different with, with, with the futures markets, the trading hours, you know, what constitutes overnight. Um, and the idea that, hey, we need to <clears throat> um, not carry positions overnight if we don't have enough margin to do that. 
So that's kind of the premise that uh, we're up against with respect to holding positions overnight. And a lot of brokerage firms typically request, hey, uh, if you don't have the margin to uh, uh, hold a position overnight, even though you do have the margin to day trade, um, please close, you know, liquidate and close your positions 15 minutes or some period of time before uh, the session opens. And, and this is typically uh, 4.45 Eastern time uh, for a majority of the popular CME uh, futures markets, it, which is just 15 minutes before the official uh, close of, as an example, the, uh, the, 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 the equity markets, the cash markets. So here's a calendar I made. It's not a very good looking calendar, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to use it to kind of uh, talk about the trading hours, right? CME groups markets are open 23 hours a day, right? They start Sunday night at six and they end Friday at 5 p.m. Let's just take a look at my calendar here. Let's go Sunday. And this is from the fifth. Um, 6 p.m. CME groups open up. CME group markets open up. They go all night all night Sunday night, and this is continuous. Then Monday, keep, keep your eye on the, on the lime green color. Uh, you know, it, it, they continue to go all morning, all morning, not nonstop, and they continue to go, and then keep an eye on the, on the, on the, on the, on the lime green again. And then we have, a, and then the market closes. I have a session close. I have a red, uh, uh, hour that's marked off here on the calendar. This is session closed. So this 23 hour period is, is the first session, right? It's, it's, it's the first session. It's closed for one hour. And the, and the, the, yeah, the weird thing is that this one hour is considered overnight, right? It's not, you know, 10 hours while we're sleeping. It doesn't track, you know, the equity, you know, uh, extended trading hours. It's just one hour. Uh, five to six, and then, you know, initially they, you know, I, I don't know why initially, but uh, initially it was it was a bigger spread than that, but now it's not. Then at six o'clock Monday, you know, an hour later, six o'clock Monday, uh, market opens up again for the remainder of the evening and continues continuously uh, the next morning, and then closes it, you know, at five o'clock again for an hour. So, uh, so you could see that this twenty-three hour session repeats itself all the way to. Um, uh, Friday. Then Friday we close uh, in the afternoon, and then that's it, right? It's, it's closed all, all the rest of the Friday evening, and then Saturday, Sunday morning, and then it opens up again Sunday, Sunday evening. That's the cycle for the 23-hour uh, futures market. I, I apologize that my uh, my graphic isn't very slick, but I made it with my outlook, <laughs> kind of winged it a little bit. Now, a couple of things to to note here. Um, you see the purple area here, 7.30, or depending on your time frame, 8.30 um, East Coast time, 7.30 Central time, is when most U.S. government reports are issued. Most economic releases are issued, right? And what, what happens there? Well, it typically ca causes some volatility. It causes some price action. It causes some, some market adjustment. And notice, and notice this is pre-market for New York, right? This is pre-market for New York, this dark blue I guess you'd call it, are the, are, is the cash market for the New York equity markets, right? And it's, and you can see it's only, it's only, you know, starts at nine o'clock and ends at, you know, four o'clock uh, East Coast time in the day. That's it. That's it. This is regular trading hours. So when you have such a, a constant situation where you have these economic releases coming an hour ahead of time, uh, it provides an opportunity to express your opinion on your trading platform. Uh, uh, with your futures trading platform before the regular trading hours opens up. So that's kind of a big positive thing. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is yeah, you know, in the evening, right? You might be trading the NASDAQ 100 and Elon Musk decides to say something that could move the market. And remember, the NASDAQ 100 is a modified market cap based index. So the bigger companies are going to have more influence over the price of the NASDAQ 100 than, uh, uh, than the smaller companies. As an example, Tesla is going to be more meaningful, uh, have more price impact than uh, a corresponding announcement in, in Peloton, as an example. It's a much smaller component within the index. So now you have the ability to participate in the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 futures, or the micro e mini NASDAQ 100 futures, whenever you want, pretty much, with the exception of that one hour. So that's kind of one of the benefits in, uh, of this, uh, one of the many benefits of, of trading the futures markets over cash markets um, is, this, uh, is this idea that uh, there's only one, one hour of downtime. It's only one hour of downtime. Now, 
we're going to go further into the overnight margin because overnight margins, uh, you know, do kick in when that session is closed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> within the overnight overnight margin uh, umbrella, there's initial margin, and this is the minimum amount of funds that you need to have in your account to establish a position. And we're going to, again, I'm going to go into detail. You'll really be, it'll really be clear when we place a trade on the trading ladder, what I mean by this. Um, so how much money do I need to, to establish a position long or short? Then there's a thing called maintenance margin, right? And maintenance margin is a little different, but it's the minimum amount of funds that you need to be in your account to hold the position overnight or longer. So the first test is have enough money in your account to establish the position. And even if you lose a little bit of money that day, mark to market, um, hopefully you have enough, uh, uh, which maintenance margin is typically lower, um, to continue to hold on to that position. So the, the difference between initial and maintenance recognizes this idea that once you establish a position, you know, it, it, it's going to ebb and flow your way and against you, your way and against you as the position matures and goes forward. Um, and then there's a thing called margin deficiency, right? Margin deficiency. This isn't necessarily a good thing. Anytime you add a, the word deficiency to something, it's not necessarily positive. But this occurs when a trader's net liquidating value is less than the margin requirement required associated with an open position. And this could result in a margin call. Who sets overnight margins? Now, this is so. This is this is interesting. This is set by the clearinghouse, right? The clearinghouse sets overnight margins is an example if you're trading CME group markets through the Globex electronic trading platform or system, then it's the CME's own you know, clearing division, right? CME has their own clearing division that decides uh, what overnight margins should be. And they have this risk-based model. Some people may, be, may uh, un, uh, have heard the word span margining before, um, and they try to literally assess, you know, what, how risky is this market to, uh, today? this week, this month, um, and they run it through this model that they've been using and refining for many years, and they come up with a number. This periodically changes due to market conditions, and we see it all the time. Now, it might not change uh, every single day, but um, if you remember back when crude oil was uh, approaching negative pricing, uh, the CME you know, bumped up considerably the overnight margin to hold a crude oil position. And that's just one example of many. Um, so margin call. Margin calls result when there is a margin deficiency in the account. We, we already said that. For an account which has a margin equity less than the maintenance margin requirement, the amount by which the margin equity is less than the initial margin requirement, if the margin equity is the, in an account is equal to or greater than the maintenance margin requirement, then no margin deficiency exists. That, and I'm not, this is a regulatory definition, right? And again, I'm, I'm going to show, we're going to get into some details here in a second. So don't, don't freak out. It's on the PowerPoint slide. I had to read it out loud. <laughs> Couldn't skip this one. Um, if you get a margin call, you've got a couple of options. One, add more funds right away. Bring the account back up to initial margin. Two, reduce your position in order to, 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 you know, to be in accordance with the amount that you need to not be in margin call. And then three, your position may be liquidated automatically if you don't do any of these things um, by, your, by your brokerage firm. Every brokerage firm has a different policy. Um, and again, we're still talking about holding positions overnight. We're not talking about day trading yet, right? That's a whole different uh, an animal. Um, here's a margin call example. I don't know if this is the greatest example of all time, but let's kind of go through it. Let's say uh, one buys a micro E-mini S&P uh, at a price of 4,700. At the time that I did this slide, initial margin was $1,265. Maintenance margin was $1,150. And you can see it's the maintenance margin is lower, right? It's, it's, you multiply that by 1.2 and then you get, you know, it's a 20% uh, premium on the initial. So let's take another example, day one, we start with a $2,000 account. We buy this contract at 47 even. Our p l is zero. Our maintenance requirement is 1,265 bucks and our excess margin is positive $735. So we're good to go. We can hold this position overnight. We don't have to worry about it. We have excess margin. Um, this is good because remember maintenance margin now, we had, we had the 12, 
the 1265 bucks necessary because we had 2000 to establish the position. And now we have uh, uh, excess margin uh, uh, in addition to the requirement uh, uh, way above the $1,150 level. Okay, Johnny, I'm going to unconfuse you as soon as we get to the chart. As soon as we get to the trading platform, I apologize. I understand exactly where you're coming from. Um, hang tight. It'll all be clear, I promise, in a couple seconds. So, um, you know, the price will fluctuate throughout the day. Uh, as it fluctuates, you know, you're, maybe, maybe the market goes your way and you're up $50. And so now your excess margin, you have $50 more in excess margin. You know, if, if we go, if, if you lose, if, we, if you're down $100 on your trade, then your excess margin goes uh, it goes, it gets less. Now we only have $365 of excess margin. You know, day two, we're going to see the same price fluctuation. So in this particular trade example here, by day three, uh, we, we are now trading at a much lower price at 45.15, right? And our PL is minus $925. Our, our margin, our maintenance margin is still the same, but we have minus $75. We're $75 short. So now we're so now we're on margin call. Okay, so th th this is kind of an example of, of that. And again, most of us will never be in that boat because we're not going to be we're, we're day trading, right? Well, let's talk about that. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the focus is. Intraday margin. When you see the word intraday margin, I mean day trade margins, and it's not set by the the CME clearing firm anymore. It's set by it's set by the FCM or the brokerage firm. Right, it's set for the, it's set by the brokerage firm basically, uh, and they're all different. Every brokerage firm has different policies and allows for different levels of day trade margins, right? And typically, they're way lower than the overnight margins, um, which gives day traders the ability to, uh, in many cases, to uh, trade more than one contract at a time. Um, considerably lower than overnight margins uh, assumes positions liquidate before the end of the session. This is key, assumes positions liquidate before the end of the session. Remember, it's a 23 hour session. Uh, we showed that in the calendar. Um, and you know, typically, you know, most brokerage firms you know, strongly encourage you to be out of there uh, 15 minutes before the close of the end of the day. So in other words, not have a long position or not have a short position. Can be auto liquidated and some brokerage firms will auto liquidate you. And margining is in real time. Again, we're gonna see that in action in a second. Okay, um, E mini S and P. I have E mini S and P. This is the classic E mini S and C, E mini S and P, not the micro E mini S and P. The micro is is a smaller size contract based in the same market. Uh, it's just one tenth the size smaller. But we're going to focus right now on the big E mini S and P. And let's say we went long one contract, one E mini S and P contract at a price of forty six eighty. We bought one, right? In other words, we're long one contract. Um, our day trade margin requirement is $500 in most cases. You know, again, it's a brokerage firm dependent, but most brokerage firms will say $500 on even the S&P. Now, if you send another limit order and to buy another contract at a different price, let's say a lower price, right? You sent an, you sent an order to the CME group and say, hey, if the market comes down to 46.70, I would like to buy another one. Then you're, then you're charged another $500 on your, on your day trade margin. You're not really charged, but you're allocated, right? So now we're up to $1,000 because you have the potential to get filled on the second unit. Let's check this out in the trading platform. Okay. Oh, wow. What happened when I wasn't paying attention? The market looks like, looks, looks like the market f uh, fell apart. All right. So let's kind of look at what are the pieces here of the puzzle? We have... And I'm just going to go ahead and put a, a MES uh, a micro contract. I have, a, I have a, a control panel here, which lets me open and close windows, duplicate windows, um, and a whole bunch of stuff. It lets me see my orders, my executions, my strategies, my positions, and my accounts. And at the top here, you see I have two simulated live accounts. I have uh, one called Sim Account One, which has $20,000 uh, of uh, cash value in it. Again, it's simulated live. And then I have another one, a smaller size account with $4,000 of, um, uh, uh, of, of cash value in it, right? Initial margin, intraday margin right here 
Um, this is this is day trade margin, right? So as I as I establish positions and place trades, this column will become popu will, will populate. The next one is how much excess intraday margin I have. And since I don't, I'm not using any of my intraday margin right now because I don't have a position, my excess is the same as my cash value. Initial margin, this is the overnight margin we talked about. So we have day trade margin intraday, initial margin overnight, and then we have a column for excess initial. We have a net liquidating value column, we have a realized PL column, and then we have an unrealized PL column. And then a total. Okay, so now I have a, a MES uh, contract up uh, right now, and I'm going to go ahead and use my SimCag Sim2 account. I'm going to go up here and to change it, um, and we're going to make a we're going to place a, a Sim trade in that particular account, right? So I'm just going to I'm just going to right click my mouse, um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, send an order to buy, and uh, you know kind of position it so we can get so we can get filled right away. So we just did. We just bought one micro e mini. S&P contract, right? So we're long one contract. Um, <clears throat> okay, everyone with me so far? We're plus one, you can see it right here. My, my, uh, you can see it twice actually. Green means we're long. If, if we were short, if we would have sold one, it would have been red. Number of contracts is one. Our open P&L is minus uh, half uh, 0.5. And uh, you can see it again here on the right-hand side of the chart. If I was using the trading ladder, you'd also be able to see it on the trading ladder as well, but it's, that would clutter up our look right now. So we're not gonna do that right this second. Let's come back up to the top here though. Cash value is still the same. It's what I started with. My intraday margin, I'm using $50 of my 40, 44,000, right? My excess day trade margin, is 3,945 and you might say, wait a second, it should be 3,950 because you're only using 50. Well, true almost, this column also adds in to your unrealized p &L. In other words, if I liquidate this position right now, you know, I sell one back, then I would have lost, well, in this case, now I would have made $3.75, or I would have made $2.50. So it adds in your unrealized uh, profit or loss to come up with the calculation of how much excess intraday margin. The main thing to remember here is I'm using $50 for this micro uh, position. If this were a classic E-mini S&P, which is 10 times bigger, then it would have been, my intraday margin would be five hundred dollars. This is ten times bigger. So for this particular case, it's fifty dollars. Let's keep an eye on it. My my initial my my overnight margin for this particular market is one thousand two hundred and sixty five dollars, same as in the PowerPoint slide. And my excess day trade uh, overnight margin or initial margin is 2,743, which means I could hold this position overnight if I decide to. I don't have to liquidate this position right now because I have plenty of in initial margin. My liquidating value, it just says, hey, Jim, if you, you, know, you started with 4,000, if you get out of your position right now, then your gross uh, uh, liquidating value is 4,000. It's moving around ten dollars, right? Because it's adding the unrealized portion to it. My total PL is the same as my unrealized because I haven't made another trade yet. All right, is am I doing better? Are we doing good? Okay. Um, let's take a look at a couple. Let's add. Let's let's add another. Let's buy another contract. Let's buy a second unit. You know, trade's going our way. We're up to, you know, we're up two points. Things are going good. And let's just go ahead and just right click and buy another one. And I just bought a second contract. Let's take a look at what happened to our intraday margin. Well, it doubled. It's $50 now. Look at, at the top. Because we have two contracts on, right? It's, it's, it's $100 now, 50 times two. My excess subtracts that 4,000 minus 100. And then plus or minus my unrealized P&L, which gives me a, an excess intraday margin, which means I still have, I could, I could place, I could, I could have a bigger size trade on if I want, right? For a day trade, because I have excess uh, intraday margin of $3,896. Okay, cool. Glad we're uh, 
<laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're doing better. All right, initial margin now is doubled, right? The exchange has said, hey, Jim, you got two of these on now. Now your initial margin is 2,530 bucks. And I'd say, okay, but I still have plenty of excess in initial margin if I want to hold this position over. If I want to carry it, I want to keep it going, I can't. Because um, I'm not in danger of being on a margin call anymore. And my unrealized PL is still moving around. I still haven't closed a trade out. Um, and so we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and kind of, I'm using the chart instead of the trading ladder because I think it's, it'll be easier to see. So I'm long two contracts right now, and I'm just going to make up, a, make up a trade. Don't follow this home alone. Uh, don't follow along blindly in a real account. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send an order in to sell a contract, right? And my idea is, hey, I want to sell one of my two units. It's 68, it's six, uh, 46.88 if the market goes up that way, right? So I'm plus two, long two. And I'm trying to sell one, minus one. That would leave me with a net long position of plus one. Alternatively, I might say, well... If I'm wrong, I would like to go ahead and, and put a stop loss in. I don't, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I want to get out. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a stop, uh, a sell stop in the system. And so now I have a profit target. I have a stop loss. And again, these are just random guys. Don't be clicking on your trading platform, please. Uh, uh, and after, thank you. Um, so, and again, one unit, right? So if I get stopped out down here, if I get stopped out down here, I still have one unit that I'd be, I would be long at. So another way to do it is instead of making it one, I'm going to change it to a two and say, okay, if I'm wrong, if the market comes down to 82 even, I would like to sell two, uh, two contracts on a stop. I would like to flatten my position and I'll try again later as an example. <clears throat> Um, Paul asked, Paul, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure the answer is yes. I just have to figure out how to do it. I'll get that answer to you next time about automatically close flattening, auto flat, auto flattening feature. At the, at, I'm, I'm assuming you're saying market on close, right? I'll, uh, I'll explore that possibility. Uh, Steve says, if you calculate potential position, oops, okay, so we just got stopped out. Look at, now my position is zero. I don't have a position. My intraday margin is, um, uh, let's see, which account I'm in. My intraday margin is only $50 now, it was 100. And the reason is I still have the potential for this getting filled, right? So the system says, hey, you, you still have an order in the book. Um, that's, that's, you could have the potential to get filled there. That's the sell a contract there. If I cancel it, then intraday margin goes to zero. I don't have a position. I don't have anything working. Uh, my excess intraday margin is the same as my cash value. I lost money on the trade. And then if you go across here, there is no day trade or initial mar uh, overnight margin requirement. So I don't have a position. And my realized PL, my unrealized PL has become realized, right? I, I, it's locked in, I banked it, the position's closed. So my total PL in the day is minus 38.50. Okay, so let's do this again. Let's do another one. Now, keep in mind, in the equity world, you might not be able to do this. In the futures world, um, my, you know, my, my margin is freed up immediately. As soon as I liquidate my position intraday in the middle of the day, I don't have to wait for settlement. There's no weird Forex rules. There's none of that stuff. Boom, I'm back in, right? I'm trying to get back in anyway. I have a position working. It's charging me $550 and I got filled just now. Uh, and then going across, you could see my, uh, my, initial, my overnight margin now is back to $1,265, right? My unrealized P&L is moving around and everything is... Um, everything's back to normal, right? Except, you know, maybe this time it will have better luck on our trade idea. Um, again, I'm just randomly making things up. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a stop loss in. And I'll do the same thing from the trading ladder just to show you how easy it is. In a second. So let's hang tight with that. Okay, so I have the anatomy of pretty much every trade that's ever made. I have a position, I have a profit target, and I have a stop loss. 
right? Sometimes it's a little more sophisticated than this with multi-targets and stuff like that. Uh, but this is pretty much it. This is as, as complicated as it gets. Hello from Germany. Welcome. By the way, I have a German wire hair pointer. That's uh, in honor of our friends in Germany. It's a great dog. Uh, Lee, this is recorded on the Ninja YouTube channel. Yes, it is. And I'm not sure how long it lives there, but it lives there for a while. So feel free to visit the Ninja Trader YouTube channel. Uh, I'll ask Isabella to go ahead and cut and paste that into the chat, various chat boxes. Okay, so now the market's going my way. You could see my unrealized PL now is positive, right? It's positive. It's it's seventeen dollars. It's sixteen dollars. It's seventeen fifty. So it's it, you know it's 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 unrealized plus realized gives you your total P and L, right? So I'm chipping away at my. Oops, there we go. We got filled. Uh, intraday margin is still fifty because I have this order here. I'm going to cancel it. Interest intraday uh, margin is zero. Overnight margin is zero. And um, now my now my total P and L, my realized P and L is minus twenty eight dollars on a gross basis. Okay, so let's let's toggle over. Let me see if I have a trading ladder up because then I want to I want to do a I'm going to show you how to do this on a trading ladder. Maybe I don't have one up. Let's go new. Let's go to the Ninja Trader Superdome, and I'm going to color code it. I'm going to link it to my quote board. And let's go ahead and what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to go to my quote board called the Market Analyzer, and I'm going to click on the ES, uh, the classic E-mini, same market. You can see that the chart looks identical, right? This is nearly 100% correlated. If not 100% correlated, it's darn, darn close. Um, and you can see this is the bigger size contract we're talking about. This is a trading ladder where we have all of the prices incrementally in a ladder format, right? Each, each price is the smallest price increment you could have in this particular market. It's traded in quarter points. Each point has got four quarters. Each tick is worth $12.50 per contract instead of $1.25 per contract, which was the micros. One-tenth the size, multiplicative math across the board. Okay, but let's, let's take a look at some important differences here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just place an order in the order book to buy a contract at uh, uh, 4688. Instead of using the chart, hang on, let me pick an account here. Let's use, I'm going to use the same account, the smaller account, SIM account one. I'm going to go SIM account one. And then we'll go ahead and place that trade. Uh, let's just go a 90s. I'm just going to send that to uh, 60, uh, 4690, right? And so let's see here. Did I do that right or wrong? Hang on. Oops, I did it in the wrong account. I'm sorry. All right, let me cancel that. So I want to show it to you in the, in, the, in the smaller account. So let's go to SimKX Life. My bad. All right. So I placed a trade on the trading ladder. You can see it's mirrored with the, on the chart, right? So anything I do on the trading ladder, it show, it, it's mirrored on the chart. Anything I do on the chart, it's mirrored on the trading ladder, right? Now let's go back up to the top and take a look at our intraday margin here for this particular uh, order. It's $500 instead of 50 Right, my excess now my excess intraday margin is down to three thousand four hundred and eighty. So you know we've chipped away at it a little bit. Initial margin is still zero because I haven't been filled yet, and then my excess margin, uh, my excess initial margin, <clears throat> is where we started because we don't have a position. Sorry about that. Just need a little coffee, a little water. Now, what happens when we get filled on this position? So I'm going to go ahead and just speed things up. I'm just going to cancel and replace this order and try to get filled right away, which we just did. And you can see green, color-coded, plus one. My PL is moving against me right now, uh, minus a point. If I go back up to my uh, quote board, uh, my, uh, I'm sorry, control panel, I, you can see my intraday margin is still 500. Access is 3,400. Now my initial margin or overnight margin is $12,650, right? 10 times bigger. It's simple, multiplicative math. And now my excess initial margin is negative. Jim, I cannot carry, you cannot carry this position overnight. You have to liquidate this position before you get to the end of the day. So this is a good example 
uh, of the differences between the two markets, the, the, the micro, which is the exact same market really that, than the, the classical one that we're trading right now, except everything's magnified. Look at my P&L. My, real, my unrealized p is minus 150 already. It would have only been $15 if it was a micro. So when you consider getting started in futures for the first time, you might want to consider easing into it with the micro, with the micro futures. They're, they're in just about every asset class you could think of. And I'll go over the asset classes in a little while. Um, so let's go ahead and do one more piece of the puzzle here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place another. I want to buy a second contract. Let's say at 87 even. I'm going to throw that order in the book. My intraday margin is now 100,000. It's doubled. 500 times two. It's two contracts. Double the intraday margin. Now I'm filled. My intraday margin is 20 is uh, overnight overnight margin requirements 25,300 uh, with a huge deficit. But I don't care about that because I'm going to liquidate this before the end of the day. So I'm not freaking out by that big negative number because um, I'm going to liquidate it. <clears throat> All right, everybody with me? All right, awesome. All right, so now what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go ahead and flatten this whole thing out. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to flatten my position. I'm, and I'm going to get rid of any orders that are dangling just by clicking that close button. OK, so now I don't have a position anymore. Um, my total P&L on the day is minus 132.50. My cash value now is 3,867.50. And I could place another trade. Well, this, in this case, I'm going to, I want to sell a contract instead of buy a contract. I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to sell a contract at 46.90. I want to create a short position, right? I want to create a short position. So now I'm short uh, a contract at a price of 40, uh, at 90 even, 46, 90 even. And let's take a look. My intraday margin is the same, 500. It doesn't matter if you're long or short. It doesn't matter. Day trade margins, it doesn't matter if you're long or short. The math still applies. The... Uh, my initial margin doesn't matter if I'm long or short. 12,650 is still margin deficit to hold this position overnight. Can't do it. Now, um, if you look at my bigger sized account, I would be able to have it because I have $20,000 of excess in there. Now, this money never, this margins never leaves your account and never is moved over to a sub account or anything like that. It's always there. But this is just kind of gives you the visual clue and the mathematical clue on where you're at with respect to leverage, where you're at with respect to your positions, and where you're at with respect to being able to hold positions over. Okay, everybody with me? Awesome. All right. So I'm short one here in this particular market. Now, let's say I decided, you know what? Um, I'm going to let that position percolate for a while. You know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know, put an order to, to buy one back at a certain point. And I think the market's going to go down. So I'm going to buy one here a little bit lower. I just used the chart for that. And you can see it's, it's going to be graphically represented here in the trading ladder also. Just got to scroll down a little bit. And now let's say I want to, I want to look at the, I don't know, the, the crude oil market. The, well, let's look at the micro crude oil market. Uh, micro crude oil market. It's another popular market. Here's the chart. Um, I have all everything linked together. So if I click on my quote board, everything changes. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the same account, CAG SIM uh, account. I want to make sure I have that selected. I do at the bottom of my trading ladder. And then I want to go ahead and place a limit in order to buy a contract at, I don't know, $82.30. $82 crude oil uh, price of crude oil is high. So I just did that. And now what's happened is my intraday margin is up to $600. My day trade margin is 600 because I have one contract. I have one position in the, in the classic e mini S P that's $500. And then I have a, a potential for a position here in crude oil, which we just got. Now we have a position in crude oil for six, for a hundred dollars. You had the hundred dollar uh, day trade margin requirement for crude with the $500 day trade margin for the e-mini S and P. And then you get your total intraday margin. The same combination math works for my, my overnight margin, right? We have instead of 12, 1,295, now, uh, our total overnight margin for both of those positions is uh, 13,293, uh, still excess. Okay, so you could have multiple markets, positions in multiple markets. That's not a problem. You know, there's all of these asset classes here on the right hand side. We have 
many different stock index futures from the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, the Dow Jones, the Russell 2000. You have all the currency crosses, all the major currency crosses you could trade in the futures market. You have energies, including crude oil, natural gas, and some other good ones. We have uh, going down my list here, metals, gold, silver, copper, uh, all the entire yield curve, entire treasury yield curve, 30-year bonds, the long end of the curve, uh, we have the 10-year notes, the five-year notes, the three-year notes, the two-year notes, and the Fed funds rate. So the, the whole entire yield curve is represented in the futures markets. And you can see in the volume column, there's a lot of volume that's traded in these particular markets. Micro Bitcoin, brand new. Ether, brand new. Something to keep an eye on, uh, the, market, the futures market. And then the traditional grains and commodities, right? All of these have different uh, uh, day trade margins and overnight margins. And, uh, but the behavior and the principles are exactly the same. Now let's do one more uh, thing here, just to show this, just to make this interesting. Um, you can see my uh, excess initial margin here is a lot, right? But to hold these positions over, it's too much, $9,226. Now let's, let me go, let me go over the ES. And I'm just going to liquidate this position. I'm just going to go ahead and close it, right? And basically, what I'm doing is I'm buying one at the market, or I could do a lim I could I could do a limit order. I could do it that way. Okay, so now I'm now I'm flat. I have zero position in this market anymore. Now look what happened to my. I took I took a contract off. I still have my micro crude oil uh, position going, but look what happened to my 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 overnight overnight margin requirement. Now I'm positive, right? Because initial margin for that micro crude is only four hundred and $643.50. So I can continue to hold that one. So when you think about, you know, at the end, at your end of day trading strategy, um, sometimes you might be in a, in, a, in a scenario where maybe you have several different uh, positions in several different markets. Some of them you would like to keep overnight and some of them you might be able to keep overnight based on, uh, you know, based on uh, you, you, your trading uh, idea, right? And so I'm going to cancel this order. Yeah. All right, um, everybody with me. I think I might have a couple more slides here, and we'll, I'll try to go slower on these slides. So hang tight, hang tight. Let's talk about leverage. So leverage is a double-edged sword, right? It could work for you as well as against you. I even have a note here on the bottom of the slide: that financial leverage can result in losses greater than the initial margin. And traders should be aware of the risks involved in future trading. That's your disclaimer, um, and it's important, right? You know, the allure of a lot of a lot of leverage kind of plays to our, uh, you know, our, our natural uh, fear and greed instincts, right? All this these, that we have in life, right? You, just, you can't. You're a human being, so you have these this phenomenon. Everybody does. Um, so this particular chart I have just made up. So. Um, I have ES, that stands for the E-mini S&P, the classic one, the bigger one, not the smaller one. The MES is the micro E-mini S&P, the smaller one. The micros all have an M in front of them, so you kind of know they're micros. Then I have CL, which is short for crude oil. This is the WTI, light sweet crude oil, very popular at the CME group. And then we have uh, the smaller brother or sister, MCL, and I am going to be gender neutral. You got the smaller size contract, MCL. Initial margin column here, we could see 12,650. Uh, MES is one tenth the size, 1265. Crude oil, and this has changed since I made this slide, but it's a pretty close 5,610, and the micros are 500, you know, one, one tenth the size. Um, so in this example here, I have a, tr uh, we, we have the day trade margin uh, in the right. Uh, this is a typo. This should be a hundred instead of ten. Uh, we have uh, prices here, and then we calculate the notional value of one contract at this trade price. So, if at forty six fifty nine, the notional value of one contract is two hundred thirty two thousand nine hundred and fifty. So by, by buying an E-mini S&P or selling an E-mini S&P, you're controlling uh, $232,950 of market value. That's pretty big for just one contract. If it was two contracts, it'd be double, right? 
Um, so from uh, from a leverage ratio point of view, with the with a with a <clears throat> excuse me, five hundred dollar day trade margin, you know, you're at eighteen to uh, you're you're at eight, I'm sorry, with uh, initial margin, um, you're at eighteen point four to, to basically eighteen to one leverage, right? From a day trade margin with the five hundred dollar day trade margin, you have four hundred sixty five to one leverage. Right, Eight, 18, 18 to one leverage with overnight margins, 465. So now you can see there's a lot of leverage there, um, dep you know, depending on how big your account is, right? Now, if you fund your account with $232,950, well, then your, your leverage ratio is one to one, right? You've completely funded it. You're not using any, any margining. You're not, nobody will do that. Most people don't do that. Uh, most people will take advantage of you know the more capital efficient use of 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 of, uh, of their money, right? So fund with less, and then be able to use the remaining capital for something else that you want to do. Um, but be careful; don't overdo it with the leverage. Okay, um, let's move on to the next slide. Um, this is more of the same, I do believe. E S M E S C L. Um, now, what I'm doing here is I'm tracking account size. So for a $5,000 account in the E-mini S&P, which is an unusual, people have $5,000 accounts um, at a price here, notional value is the same. Now my ratio is 46 to one, 47 to one if you round up with the micro, um, with a, a, let's say my account size is $1,000 on the micro. Again, not unusual. Um, same pricing, notional value one tenth the size. My, my ratio is now 23 to one, my, my leverage ratio. CL at 5,000, um, 15 to one uh, leverage ratio. And then the micros uh, at 1,000, if your fund, if your account size was, was 1,000, would be seven, uh, almost eight to one is your, is your leverage ratio. Um, so keep in mind that relationship between, you know, the more contracts you have, even though you do have a lot of flexibility in most cases with day trade margins, your leverage ratio is increasing, right? And that could cause some uh, damage to your account if you're not careful or some psychological effects, right? Serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, all of these things that we talk about. Okay, however, there's good news. When you compare, now let's compare, let's compare with the cash markets, specifically the SPY. I could have done the SPX, but we'll do the SPY um, and then the ES, right? This is a spider. Um, let's say a notional value, two to, uh, two to one, uh, notional value, it's two to one, right? You could go two to one if you, you, know, if you borrow with your, and you don't have a pattern day trade account. Now, not, nothing I've suggested today suggests that you need to have a pattern day trade account to trade futures. You don't need $25,000 minimum to to do as many trades or as few trades as you want and to have margining available to you immediately and to trade 23 hours a night. You don't need that. Um, so in this particular case, um, we have a notional value of $940, which means uh, you would need 250 shares to match the notional value of one E-mini S&P contract. So you could either go 250 shares or you can go one contract of ES and you have the same notional value, which is 235,000. Um, this $940 number here, that's just the notional value if you just have a regular two to one ratio if you open a position. Everybody good? Okay, uh, wow, 1251 already. Okay, so a couple of bullet points at the bottom, margin availability, after liquidating position, SPY, one to two day settlement. Yes, immediately, immediately. Maybe you don't wanna make another trade uh, that day, but you would like to make one in the evening. You could certainly do that. Okay, that's the end of the PowerPoint, thank goodness. Um, there's the risk, I'll leave that up here for a second. This is important, remember, just don't overdo the leverage. Uh, easy, easy, easy on the day trade margins and um, start with micros if you're brand new to this thing. A um, couple other things here, the platform training page, um, feel free to visit that. We have new events coming and going all the time. This is what it looks like in reality. Um, if you're also, even if you're not trading futures, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday live trade setup events are a lot of fun. Feel free to join those. They're free. Um, we look for trade ideas. We do technical analysis. Uh, we do fundamental analysis, and we, and we come up with some trade ideas. Uh, Gerson, thank you so much.
Um, next week, Wednesday, we got getting to know treasury bonds, notes, and interest rate futures. And then again, I think on Thursday, we're doing the same event again, understanding futures market. No, actually, that's going to change once we're done talking today. There's some other how-to, uh, you know, starting with Ninja Trader, op- order entry, trade management, charting, additional training. And uh, I'm going to ask Isabella to cut and paste this link into the chat rooms uh, so that you have them as well. And there's some of the other events that we do from time to time. Feel free to check often. Um, and that's it. There we are. We're making new lows in the yes. Things aren't looking so good for everyone's portfolio, but these things kind of bounce around and uh, go up and down as time goes on. And notice we still have our position on, on the crude, right? So let's just kind of toggle over there one last time so we can see it. We'll go, where did it go? Where is it? ML, MCL, here we go. Um, just to kind of recap, we're, we're green, which means we're long one. We bought a contract. We're 17 ticks against us, right? 17 ticks against us. Now it's 19 ticks against us and it's a dollar a tick. So we're down $19. This were a large size crude oil, 10 times bigger. This would be $180 minus $180. That's how that works. Okay. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate your time. Appreciate the thumbs up on YouTube. That's greatly appreciated. Sorry I bored you a little bit on the uh, PowerPoint, which means maybe I need to adjust it a little bit, not to make it so boring. We'll come up, we'll come up with uh, strategies to do that. Uh, John, thank you very much for being here. Um, appreciate it. Um, on your comment, John, the Bitcoin, yeah. I mean, I, um, John said Bitcoin uh, BTC going down right now. Um, here's just a daily chart on Bitcoin. It's not looking really good. This is the Bitcoin futures here at the CME group. And you can see a uh, pretty big bear market formation here on a daily candle uh, for sure. So uh, I have an area of support and resistance that I drew there in my dark blue line. And we'll see if we can get back up over it or not. Not really optimistic on Bitcoin right now. Um, Rose says, thanks for sharing. I sent an email before on how to get your screen apps back after they disappear. Okay, sounds good. Also, Ro, though, this is a way more efficient way to do this. If you go to um, help, and then on the platform itself, click email support. I know it sounds like I'm kind of brushing you off, but I'm not. These guys are really fast and really good. And so by sending this email with, you you could add a screenshot, whatever you want. Um, they know it's who you are and what account it came from, and they respond right away. They'll get you back on your feet a lot faster than I will. So, uh, Rove, just use that feature if you can still log into your platform um, and send that out. The email address is platform support at ninjatrader.com. Platform support at ninjatrader.com. L, thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Not boring. Uh, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, Chris, thanks. Appreciate that. Anisha, thanks. Um, Evernub says, I accidentally closed a tab on the main menu. For example, log. How do I reopen said tab? You closed the tab. Oh, just hit the add button. Hit that little add button there. So there's a little add button. Click on that and just select log again. And it'll add it. I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave that up for a second. Pete, thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. The platform support people row are going to be the, your, your go-to move because I would just forward stuff to them anyway. Okay. Um, sounds good, everybody. Um, that's it for today. Hopefully we'll see you again, uh, if not this week, next week. And I do want to remind everybody, be safe out there and be good to each other. Thanks for coming.